स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so the final step is we use our hamiltonian formulation so step 7 uh, we use alternative hamiltonian formulation so uh, it is perfect to stop at step number 6 and work the problem in the lagrangian form but we see that it's quite involved so we use the hamiltonian formulation or uh, introduce the pontegrin Pontryagin H function. Okay. So, so that is nothing but our Hamiltonian. So, our Hamiltonian. So, so let me call this as H. Simply H. So, the H evaluated at optimal condition. So, whenever I use a star superscript, it's the optimal condition. So, H becomes uh, V times uh, X bar star, U bar star. T plus lambda bar star times my plant condition x bar star times u bar star uh, times t and then all I have to do is I am going to change our Lagrangian to the Hamiltonian description. So, notice that my Lagrangian can be written in the form of a Hamiltonian this is also equal to h star at x bar star u bar star lambda star comma t plus and then so notice that h contains the quantity inside the functional plus plus the right hand side of the uh, the plant condition plus then we have the partial derivatives of the cost function partial x partial s partial x at start condition times x bar dot plus partial s partial t at start condition minus uh, lambda bar x bar dot star. Okay. So, let me call this as our condition number f okay. and then again recall that s is our terminal cost function, terminal cost function right and then let me quickly write down all my uh, constraints from the Lagrangian form to the Hamiltonian form. So, my, my co-state constraints let me call this as B prime right. So, so B prime is my control equation. So, the control uh, e equation the control constraints in terms of Hamiltonian in terms of the Hamiltonian becomes partial L partial U bar at star which is partial H partial u bar at star set equal to 0 right. Uh, so, we see that u only appears in h. So, that uh, change is quite simple. My Euler Lagrange which we termed as a now I term it as a prime my E L equation is changed as follows. Notice that uh, the original E L equation in terms of the Lagrangian was uh, was the following minus d d t of partial L partial x bar dot set equal to 0. All I need to do is plug in L in uh, in the form of H and we see that we, we get the following expression partial H partial x at start condition plus second derivative of S with respect to x square at start condition x bar dot plus partial uh, 2s partial x bar partial t at start condition minus uh, then this quantity becomes partial well total derivative of partial s partial x at start condition minus lambda bar uh, star okay? and this is set equal to 0. Now, this is after taking into account wherever uh, what whatever variables are appearing right. 
and then since this is this quantity here circled quantity is the total time derivative we use chain rule to make it a partial time derivative. So, this becomes the following. So, this quantity reduces to a minus of partial s partial x 2 and uh, well times x bar dot star and then plus partial s second derivative of partial s partial x partial t minus lambda bar uh, lambda bar uh, star dot. So, we have taken the time derivative notice I can cancel few terms this term cancels with this one and this term cancels with this one and we are left with a very very simple equation which is partial h partial x bar at the start condition becomes minus uh, lambda bar dot star. So, notice that now my Euler Lagrange equation has reduced to an extremely simple form and finally, I complete the system by introducing my co-state equation and the boundary condition. So, my co-state equation which was C prime becomes my co-state equation which was del L del lambda. So, originally it was the following this is reduced to partial h partial lambda at start condition is equal to lambda uh, bar dot star. Okay. So, so this is my co-state equation we just plug in the value of lambda and see how it differentiates with respect to lambda. And finally, my boundary condition which we denoted by uh, which we denoted by by E is going to be changed to E prime. So, my boundary general boundary condition the natural boundary condition reduces to the following form. We see that this becomes uh, h star well I am directly taking all the partial derivatives in the natural boundary condition which was initially written in terms of L times par variation of T f plus partial s partial x at star minus lambda bar at star times delta x f. Okay. So, this is equal to 0 and I call this. So, now let so this this is my E condition number E. Okay. So, we have completed the description of the solution uh, of this optimal control problem. We can again simplify our problems into various uh, sub cases uh, depending on whether our boundary points are fixed or variable. So, let me quickly describe some of uh, some of the simplified cases. So, different cases cases of my boundary condition uh, the first case is very simple fixed fixed uh, time point and fixed uh, fixed state variables. So, fixed final time notice that we are in our uh, in our setup we never change our initial reference point. So, so whether it is the optimal curve let us say this is my op optimal curve and whether it is the perturbed curve it always starts with the same starting point right. So, but let us let us say my first case is fixed final time. So, T f does not change and fixed final state right fixed final state. So, which means that even my final point does not change and which means that our natural boundary condition is trivially satisfied because delta T f is 0 and delta x f is 0 and what we get is. So, delta T f is equal to delta x f both variations are 0 and so the only conditions that we are going to get is uh, the, the fixed point boundary conditions itself. So, x at T 0 is x 0 and x x at t 1 is x 1 right. Okay. So, then uh, the, the next condition that we can describe is let us say it is fixed final time, but variable final state. So, which means that T f is 0 the variation in time is 0, but the variation in the final state variable is not. 
okay so condition b is free free final time and fixed final state free final time but fixed final state so what we have is uh, delta xf is zero and delta tf of course is not zero so this means that so if delta tf is not zero uh, so so let me just quickly draw the diagram of this situation so i'm talking about let's say this is my time point t0 and my time point tf and uh, my initial curve is let's say the following uh, this is my x star and and x star changes in such a way that my my final state does not change but let's say my new perturbed quantity is tf plus delta tf so the final time changes but the final state does not change so this is x star plus delta x so in that case delta tf is not zero which means our natural boundary condition kicks in and we get we get the following setup constraint to be zero we have pa h star plus partial s partial t this is set equal to zero which is the coefficient this is the coefficient of of delta tf right okay so then uh, then what i have is c free free final time free final time and fixed final state so the other way around fixed final state so let me quickly draw the diagram in this situation again we fix t0 we fix tf and we see that i get x star and so i am uh, i have free final time so my my perturbed quantity is such my perturbed state is such that my uh, final time changes uh, but well free final time but fixed well free final that has already been done so free final time so free final i would say state the other way around but fixed final time okay and i see that uh, this is the scenario so i have uh, xf and uh, i have delta xf plus delta xf right okay so in this scenario i have that delta xf is non zero and my natural boundary condition kicks in and i get partial s partial x bar at star uh, minus lambda bar star is equal to zero and and uh, well that's it so we uh, okay so that's it well even in in case b we had one natural boundary condition and also we had the condition that x at tf is equal to xf so this was the fixed final state right so this also needs to satisfy okay and here we only have one condition and then finally we could have another a uh, situation where we have a uh, free final time and free final state in such a way that the final state moves along a particular curve so let's say i have free final time free final time but dependent dependent free final state free final state and i see that this is also going to be Uh, x of t uh, times and t here from t zero to t f, but now uh, my my curve moves along in such a way that the perturbation the perturbed curve moves along in such a way that it follows a curve. So let's say this is x star plus delta x, and my perturbed curve is theta, where my original Uh, my final uh, point on the on the optimal curve and the perturbed curve lies right so suppose in so what i am saying is the following suppose suppose 
my final time point T f and the state variable x of T f are, are related are related such that x of t x of t lies on on theta of t x of t lies on theta of t so so what i see is the following i see that x of tf is theta of tf and and variation of x of at the final point will be since it lies on the curve is is almost equal to uh, theta dot where the dot represents the derivative with respect to t at t f times delta t f right. So, then my natural boundary condition will kick in and I am going to get a single expression uh, h star plus partial s partial t at start condition uh, plus partial s partial x minus minus lambda bar star and this is evaluated at uh, well this is all evaluated at start condition times theta dot of t and this is delta t f and of course uh, the boundary condition for this boundary condition to be 0 which means that this underlying quantity will be 0 right. And finally, uh, one last uh, type of boundary condition that I have is free final state and free final time and such that they are independently moving. So, free, free final time and independent, independent free final state, right. So, free final time and independent free final state if T f uh, and x of T f not related then I can write down. So, which means neither neither par variation of time nor variation in the state curve are 0 and so my natural boundary condition will give me two sets of uh, constraints. So, h star plus partial s partial t at the start condition is 0 and then the second from delta x f I get that partial s partial x x minus lambda at start condition this is also set equal to 0. So, this is directly from my natural boundary condition ok. So, so, so these are all the steps that I had to mention let me quickly summarize all these steps especially the steps via the Hamiltonian formulation which is the easier out of the two methods. So, summary so, summary of the Pontryagin procedure, Pontryagin procedure or the Bolza problem which involves the cost function. Okay, so, given uh, given given my plant condition, so this is the statement of the problem. So, statement. So, given my plant condition x dot is equal to f right and and my performance index which is given by j equal to s the cost function of x comma t plus well this is at final time point plus t 0 to t f of this integral comma t d t uh, and and the boundary condition and the boundary conditions which are x at t 0 is x 0 and x at t f is equal to x f which may or may not be free generally we fix the initial uh, initial boundary condition. We have to find find the optimal control which is given by u bar star ok. So, then so, the solution summary is as follows solution summary step 1 we we find the Pontryagin h function Pontryagin h function let me call this as h of x bar u bar lambda t which is v of x bar 
u bar t plus lambda times uh, well I continue to use uh, lambda is lambda. So, lambda in general is a scalar function times f x bar u bar t. So, that is my Hamiltonian and then the second step is we are going to minimize the Hamiltonian with respect to the control minimize. Notice that we are writing the word minimize although we are taking the first derivative and the reason being uh, we are dealing with all all about convex functions. We have seen that when functions are convex our extremum is going to give us minimum. So, minimize h uh, with respect to uh, with respect to u by setting partial h partial uh, partial u equal to 0 uh, that is at the optimal condition right. So, from here uh, from this condition I am going to get the optimal value of u which is a function of the other variables the state variable lambda and t right. And then in step 3 is we are going to write down our optimal Hamiltonian by substituting this optimal control variable right. So, step 3 is from steps 1 and 2 find the optimal Hamiltonian uh, Hamiltonian h star and we see that by substituting our u star. And then in step 4 once we have the optimal Hamiltonian we set up our constraint equation we have the state constraint the state equation x bar dot star is equal to partial h partial lambda at star and then my co-state equation which is lambda bar star dot is equal to minus h uh, partial h partial x bar uh, star and then I have my uh, well I have my boundary condition my initial condition x at t 0 is x 0 and my boundary condition which is given by uh, which is given by h star plus partial s partial t at t f plus times delta t f plus partial s partial x minus lambda at start condition uh, and evaluated at t f this is set times delta x f this is equal to 0. And finally, after solving after solving all these equations notice that uh, these are n vector equations, but first order and these are another n equations. So, we are solving 2 n plus 1 equations the, the last one is this boundary condition ok. So, uh, so after the solution we can find uh, we have found all the variables the state and the co-state and then we plug it back into our into our step 2. So, substitute substitute x bar star lambda star uh, into step 2 to get u star which is what we were after uh, or the optimal control right ok. Well, one final point of discussion in this solution methodology is how about the sufficient condition we have described the necessary condition for finding the optimal value. So, the sufficient condition is we have seen to find uh, to find the sufficient condition we have to look at the sign of the second variation, but uh, the good news is that we are dealing with convex functions. So, the second variation is always going to be uh, well the the hessian of the second variation will always uh, be positive definite the only thing that we have to check is a relation very similar to the strengthened Legendre condition. So, so the sufficient condition as I just said is we have to look for look at the sign look at the sign of second variation of j from t 0 to t f of partial uh, second derivative of h with respect to x uh, delta x bar square plus partial 
h partial u bar square second derivative times delta u square plus 2 times partial h partial h partial u partial x uh, partial u partial uh, well variation of u times variation of x times times d t. So, this is our second variation in general and we can write it in the form of the hessian matrix. So, integral from t 0 to t f times delta x delta u times the hessian matrix which is partial to partial x uh, x x uh, and well partial x partial u. So, this is going to be the i th component the j th component. So, this is i j. So, this is a sec, uh, second order tensor and times uh, delta x delta u right. So, I have written the above expression in a more compact notation and all we need to make sure is that this hessian matrix. So, let me call this as a matrix h this is going to be positive definite which is certainly the case. So, h well let me not say h this is our matrix a. So, a is a positive definite because because our function h is uh, convex right. Uh, this is uh, this is the general uh, general optimal control setup we take convex functions ok. And, and the only thing that we have to check is the following partial derivatives check uh, check the second partial derivative derivative given by uh, partial 2 partial partial 2 h partial u 2 this is equal to 0. So, all we need to do is check this partial derivative whether the sign is positive or not and this is very similar or this is very similar similar to our strengthened Legendre condition strengthened Legendre condition right uh, ok. So, we are we are now let me just uh, highlight the solution methodology by a few quick examples.